I've had a few people reach out to me and say, can you explain the state test a little bit better for a parent? Okay, I'm in California. Our uh, students in grades three through eighth grade and grade 11 take the Smarter Balance Assessment Consortium exam, the test, the assessment. We name it the California Assessment of Student Performance and Progress in the state, but we take the SBAC. There are a lot of school districts around the United States that take the SBAC platform. They just name it something else. I believe Illinois takes the PARC, P-A-R-C-C. I don't remember what the acronym is for, but it's a smarter balance um, assessment type of assessment, but that's their platform that they use. Well, now that I've said all of that and you're like, I really don't care about that, let me show you the sample items that students in grades three through eighth grade and, and high school have access to. I am going to focus on mathematics because I already know the United States struggles with mathematics and California, not necessarily our school district that I work for, but this, California is out of the 50 states, not the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico, out of the 50 states, we are 41st. So that there's something going on. Like, what, what are we doing? And teachers are great. They are awesome with the students. However, I will say that maybe we need to really think differently about what we're assessing and what we're teaching. So here is what one of the assessment, uh, I wanna take you to that SBAC sample items um, website. Let, let's just jump over, right on over. Here is that website. It's the sampleitems.smarterbalance.org. Now, when I first got here, I was like, oh, these are for California. Actually, anybody in the United States can look at these and they are open to the public. This is, these are the sample items. So you just select browse items. Now, again, teachers uh, have access to this too. Everybody does. But I want you to go here and select browse items. You can go to about the test items, browse test items again there and home but we're just gonna select it here. You select the grade that you want, then it will give you which subject matter you wanna go through. And then there are four claims. I wanna point out that there are four claims in English language arts as well. You may wanna play around with those. Mathematics, concepts and procedures. It gives you all the different targets. These are like the, what you're going to be doing in this particular problem. And then all of the standards that are assessed for grade three. We can do that for grade four and so on in high school. But if I click on problem solving, communicating and reasoning and modeling the data analysis, this is something different. Problem solving, communicating and reasoning and modeling and data analysis are the avenues of thinking and the navigation uh, through the problem. That's a whole nother video. You can go check out another video for that. I haven't done it. Well, I have, but I really want to break that down a little bit more. But what this basically means is this is computational. You know, you can set up the problem. You can work out the problem. You're sol solving for something. The sum, the product, I don't know, balancing this pro equation. And then all of these are, what are you going to be doing? So if I click on any of these targets, they don't tell me what they are here but they will if I come down here. So this one, apply mathematics to solve well-posed problems in pure mathematics and those arising in everyday life, society in the workplace. You're like, what? You know, and then this is what comes up. This is third grade. I'm going to maximize this piece. It talks about making science kits. It talks about what the students should be doing to, uh, your class is getting ready to conduct some conduct science experiments to prepare several kits. Science kits must be put together. The table shows the science supplies your teacher has in the classroom. There's the table. Minimize that. And then we can come over here. It's asking this problem here. What is the difference in degrees of these temperatures? What's the difference? That's a uh, a takeaway uh, problem, like what's what's the number from 57 to 72? What's that number? Then wait, there's another number. There's another problem that's associated with this one. Use the information in this table. Science gets to help you complete the chart. Enter the number of science tools needed to make six science kits. Oh, by the way, 
this is not table two. There's a table two. Sometimes students miss that. So even when I expanded it, I should have scrolled. And not every student will see this. Like, and you can highlight, say, okay, I'm, you can highlight this, things like that. I'm going to minimize that again. So you have to fill that out. And then you have, that's, there's a question one. There's a question, okay, I missed question two. Okay, question two, three, and then a question four. So we have one, two, three, four, five problems in one. We call this a performance task. This is something you want to be very cognizant of. So stamina, um, the difficulty level in the classroom, and what's the complexity level? Can the student actually do this problem? Can they make sense of this problem? That's a mathematical practice out of the eight standards for mathematical practice. That's number one. I want you to stop and process this and kind of play around with this particular problem or any other problems or ask your child in whatever grade, can you do this? Tell me about this problem. Let's view another problem in grade three. Actually, yeah, let's do that. I want to show you one other one, especially modeling and data analysis, um, in particular this one. This one I did just recently, um, quickly, under 60 seconds, so it was really fast. But this one talks about, uh, it's a few problems. It's Jenna made a picture graph in which each star represents some number of students. She forgot to complete the key. There's the key. The difference between the number of students who voted for blue and the number of students who voted for red is greater than five, but less than nine. Enter a possible number of students that each star could represent. There's a lot going on here. Remember, this is modeling and data analysis. So you're looking at the model and you're analyzing data. So enter the po possible number of students that each star could represent. And then the number, the difference between the number of students who voted for blue and the number of students who voted for red is greater than five, but less than nine. So let's just grab a number of three. Three times two is six, because we said it said red, right? And then blue is three times four is 12. What's the difference between that? That's a, So you have to pick a number. Now we have to get the difference. It's an equation. So 12 take away six, not four take away two, but remember each star represents a number. It's like, it's a variable. The star is the variable. So 12 minus take away or take away, six is six. Is that number between five and nine? Because it says greater than five, but less than nine. It is. The question is, what's the answer? Usually students will stop there and give you the answer six, but it clearly says, enter the possible number of students that each star could represent, that could. You could, have, you could have said three or four, and that would have, the student would have gotten this one right. That was it for this problem. So that's something to think about. Um, and if we go back and we browse again, let's go to high school, choose mathematics, um, concepts and procedures. Actually, I think I wanna go here. And some, well, some of these are multiple choice. I think, no, I wanted to go to modeling and data analysis just because, and we'll go here. It's a short answer. Um, kind of wanted to go back. I want to show you this. It says construct autonomously chains of reasoning to justify mathematical models used, interpretations made, and solutions proposed for complex for a complex problem. And if you're a parent and you're like, I can't help my child, you can. There is a way. I'll show you that. Um, you can walk them through it. You can ask them questions. You don't even need to know how to do it. But here's the problem. And if we Make this bigger, I want you to scroll, okay, just to make sure there's no other chart. It's asking, we, we see there's some information, we know there's one table, there's the table. And then here it's asking you to use the table, but there's also a question. So this is, there's more than one question or problems to solve. 
So you have to be aware that this one is asking you to do something. And it says write an equation for each company that shows the why, the, the cost, why, in dollars with respect to serving size X in grams. Enter the equation for Mama's Italian Pizza Corporation in the first response box. Something like some of you are like, oh my gosh, this is a lot. And then and you can enter the equation. It gives you everything that you need. And then it says, using the using data table one, determine whether pizza A or pizza E has a greater percentage of carbs per serving. And then it says the cafeteria wants pizza, wants a pizza that has a high percentage of protein. It's a whole new chart. They didn't even put it over here. So and that's what they want. Now, I do want to show you something because some of you know that I like talking about ChatGPT. If you're a parent and you're like, mm, I don't know, I can't help. Let me show you what I did. I went ahead and I threw this entire equation in here. I mean, first of all, let me show you. I, I copied this entire problem. I highlighted it like this, like this. Now, again, you can, this will, I want you to use it to help describe how to do this problem. You copy this, control C, command C, if you're on a Mac. And then I threw it in here, okay? It looks crazy. Like, it doesn't even look like anything. Then I took the problem that it was asking me, this part, and I highlighted just this part, just the first part. And I threw it in. And then... I asked it to just solve this problem. I just did it, use this prompt. And it says to address, it tells me how to help my child. And, or it could just tell your, your own child, like, hey, you do this, let me sit there with you, let's work on this together. Because even if, even if it just did it for you, it's not gonna help if they don't understand it. So to address the task, we'll first establish the equation that represents the cost as a function of serving size for both Mamma Mia's Italian Pizza Corporation and Luigi's Pizza Pie Makers. So it helps you with, here it is. There's the equation. Did it pretty nicely, didn't it? And then it gives you information about it. Now it gave a visualization. It went above and beyond. You don't need that. But it. I was like, if you could draw it, if it let you, it did. Then, um, now, I said, now do this problem, interpret the scatter plot by. And of course it yelled at me and said, um, I can't do this one because I need the protein. And it said, no, I still can't because I need the protein value. I screenshot this and upload it because I have the paid version, the $20 a month version. I uploaded it. I said, you are correct. Here's the chart. It shows me what the protein value was. So this one, uh, this bottom one, um, it was asking this one, I'm sorry, with the chart, because I didn't do all of them. It says, interpret the sc scatter plot by describing the correlation between serving size, identify the pizza with the highest percentage of protein, and explain how you determine which pizza has the highest percentage of protein. So you're just not looking at the chart, you're doing three other things. This performance task, we typically give a day or two for these. Like, so this is what we're asking high school students to do. And I'm going to, reach a little bit and say, this isn't difficult for students taking math in high school. It shouldn't be, but it will be difficult if they've never done a two, three step performance task. If they've only done the computation and we give them the formula instead of having them derive and figure out what formula works best. So it, it, it explains how to do this. It shows me this. It gave me a percentage of protein. I, you know, and if I look at this, I knew I was like, okay, so I have the X axes and the Y axes. And I knew I could take this plot, this number here, about 37, I could have rounded it to 40 and then about 350. And I knew I had to divide, but I needed it in grams whole number. So I just multiplied by a hundred. Now it did that, totally did that. I'm not, I mean, even I would have had to get some help if I did this, but, and it's help, it shows you because it gave me the answer here, because first it said, this is, it says clearly from, the, from the plot, it's clear that pizza F has the highest protein content. No, it's not clear visually. I mean, at first I was like, it is, but it isn't. 
So I went back and I was like, um, do the calculation for the chart. So to so um, or to show which was based on equivalent data. I spelled two things wrong. It didn't care. Um, so look, it did that. And then I was like, okay, there it is. It, it does it. That is what I needed to see why. But maybe you as a parent aren't like, I, I don't know. I, I need more help. And the reason why I feel like, so ChatGPT is that. If you wanted to look at one of my other videos on introduction to ChatGPT, you can go here. Um, or you can, I will keep playing around. You can come back to this and I will show you how I actually do this. This is a lot. I know that, but you would be surprised at your high school child if you were at home and you allowed them to do this. I don't believe, as I've said before, that students should use ChatGPT as a transaction that is cheating. It should be a tool and a device that can allow you to strategically do things to help guide you. So it becomes a tool that helps you um, and can guide you. It becomes a transaction when you want it to give you output that can help you. But if it's only a transaction, meaning do this homework for me, write this paper for me, and then turn it in, it's not your voice. It can give you a, a you know, it can help you be creative. But I, I really believe, I mean, there are things, I'm not in school right now, but if I needed it to write me, you know, write me a blog about this and then I go back, oh no, I didn't really want to say that and tweaked it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I'm not saying that, I wouldn't say ChatGPT helped me do this. I, I mean, and can it tell you whether or not it's AI or not? It will tell you it can. But I wrote a paper and said, is this AI or not? And it told me it was. So just something to think about. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have questions. Let me know if you'd like me to explain another problem. We can go in depth or explain how to do a particular problem. And um, let's have fun with it. Let's help our children be experts in mathematics and teachers use these performance tasks, maybe as um, tickets out the door or let it be the bell work or have a whole classroom a day of letting kids talk about it and grapple with it and then present it. That would be and present their problem maybe using a Google presentation and each group pick a slide. So those are some tips and tricks. Thank you again for watching. I will see you in the next video.